at this current time, Cleveland Browns beat reporter, uh, Mary Kay Cabot from Cleveland.com. She joins us on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, and she will be joining us every single Thursday throughout the Cleveland Browns football season. So Fantastic. I'm personally excited nice. about yeah, that. Yeah, no, that's a well, great get Hang on, us. Earl. If we're NWA, what's that make Mary Kay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I got you. Now, this is, this is little known. Like I asked Mary Kay and she made she said her one of her favorite artists artists rappers Nicki is Nicki Minaj. There you go. Nicki She's Minaj. Honorary Nicki Minaj. She, has, on there this it is. she got, but she has the regular color hair. So we're just going to go with Mary Kay. Mary Kay. How are you? What was what your takeaway uh, so far at, at the Greenbrier experiment? Is it working? What was the intended purpose of it? You know, I think it worked. I think uh, the guys really bonded with each other. They got away from here and they really had no choice but to spend a bunch of time with each other. So I think it had the desired effect. It seemed like it was really positive. There was really, really good work on the field and everything went off without incident except for those two fights at the end of the very last practice yesterday. So, and I just so happened to catch one of them on film, which I, on, on my phone. So I was, uh, Pretty excited to be able to catch that. So, you know, part luck and uh, just part being in the right place at the right time. But, uh, yeah, I think it was good work. I think the team, uh, there's a lot of talent on this football team. It just has to come together. I, the fight, it's not that big of a deal. But, my God, what is Obo thinking? Slapping a man <laughs> and running. Like, what like was little, that all about? Like a little kid. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, well, you know, he got shoved to the ground in the back. So I'm sure, uh, like, he wasn't happy about that. And then it just went one thing to another. So he he felt probably that that was the first shot taken. And then, you know, he slapped him in the head and, and, ran. and then I and just <laughs> took him. And you're gonna, uh, if you're going to hit a guy in the head, then stand there and take it. Don't hit him and then run. It was it was very interesting, but the funny part about it, it not funny, but the you know when you're standing outside in the very very bright sun and you have a little iPhone in your hand, you're looking through this iPhone, and you can't see what you're even really filming. You're just hoping that maybe you're getting something halfway decent, and so I didn't know what I had until after I really looked at it, and then I thought, and then I realized, oh my goodness. Not only do I have the punch, but I have the shove and the slap too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I couldn't believe that that the whole thing was on there, so you could see, you know, why that all happened. And you, know, Mary Kay, how did you think um, Watson looked? How you know was he um, was he crisp? Was he sharp? How did he look? Uh, did he look like he had a grasp of the offense? Yeah, he's got a great grasp of the offense. Uh, as we all know, he's got tremendous athleticism, tremendous agility. He's got all of those things. Uh, but I do think that, uh, you know, he's going to have to really work hard in the red zone. I thought that uh, the, the defense basically dominated in the red zone in seven on sevens and 11 on 11s. Uh, it's going to be really good work for Deshaun Watson to go against this defense. He will be prepared for good defenses after going against these guys. But that's an area they really still need to work on. Of course, they're not scheming it up or anything like that yet. But, you know, that's something that they're going to have to make sure that they can score the football. That's where quarterbacks make their mark and their money, too, Mary Kay. As you know, if you want to lose football games, kick a lot of field goals. Um, the teams that convert those field goals to touchdowns are the teams that win. Was there anything in particular that stood out about the offense's struggles? Or is it your assessment that the defense was just so good that they made it impossible for the offense to, to get anything done? The defense brought the juice. That's what it was wow. all about because there are some really, really good, talented offensive players. Elijah Moore is dynamite. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Uh, these defensive backs, well, first they were getting some good pressure up front. Miles was getting great pressure. Uh, you know, Z's getting good pressure. Oboe's getting good pressure. But uh, but these defensive backs, I mean, they brought the juice in this train in this these first eight days of training camp. They were lights out. Every time you look up, you see those guys going after the ball, breaking up passes, and uh, I, I think they were truly a highlight of this camp and they you know they really dominated a couple of those red zone periods and so i think Is it was that, that more than 
Yes, I, I think so. It's talent and it's Jim Schwartz. I mean, you've got some really good guys back there. Martin Emerson has taken a step up in his second season. Uh, he's, wow. he's an excellent, excellent cornerback. Greg Newsom, he's got his head back in the game and he's, you know, it looks like he's ready to really take his game up to the next level. Juan Thornhill has been amazing. Uh, you know, so, you, you know, you've got a number of guys back there that are just really ready to set the tone. And I know they want to be the best secondary in the NFL. Mary Kay, the reports that Shelby Harris is visiting today, the first thing that told me is, well, they had eight days in West Virginia to look at the D tackles, and they must not have liked what they saw because the, as soon as they land back in Cleveland, they've got someone coming in for a visit. Is that is that fair? You know what? I, I don't know that that's ac actually the way that it's going down. I mean, these guys are always – uh, looking to add talent to the team. I'm sure that Shelby is somebody that has been on the radar for the past couple of months. And now you're getting to the point where you can get some of these guys at a bargain basement price. I mean, when you think about it, you know, you still have uh, Jadavian Clowney still out there. John Johnson's out there. So some of these guys are, you know, just making some visits. And, you know, I think that, that Shelby Harris visited maybe the Broncos yesterday. So he's on a little bit of a free agent tour. So it doesn't really necessarily say to me that, um, you know, that they just all of a sudden realize that they have some issues there. I think it's that they're realizing that perhaps they have a chance to get a guy at a bargain, at a bargain basement price. Odds that Jadavian Clowney visits the oh. Browns this week. <laughs> I I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that ship has sailed. But I will pick him up from the airport if he needs a ride. <laughs> that's, that's wow. Nice. That's nice. interesting. Okay. Hey, we we were talking about this whole idea that this camp away from, from home for them will build team camaraderie and, and team spirit and that whole thing. We talked on the show last week. I can't remember a time that the Browns ever took training camp outside of the state or really outside of the immediate Cleveland metro area. It, what is the history on that? Is this the first time they've done that? For any length of time, yes. I mean, they have gone uh, and practiced against the Bills sure, on the right. road. We practiced against the Giants on the road. And this summer, of course, uh, we are heading up to Philadelphia soon to practice against the Eagles on the road in that home and away series. Um, but just in terms of taking it on the road, no, they, they really haven't done this. And I think they liked how it went so much so that, you know, we could be heading back to the Greenbrier again next summer. So hopefully everybody had a great time because, uh, you know, I think there could be uh, you know, a, a return performance next year. Well, that media tent, mm. that outhouse were sparkling, so I can't wait to go back. <laughs> have some good yeah, stuff we have a, yeah, we we have a few things that, you know, that maybe, you know, we would like to be a little bit different here and there. Of course, as members of the media, we never like to, we never like to complain about anything. No. We're always grateful to be doing the job that we have. And we know that a lot of people want to do these jobs. Um, but yeah, there were a few little minor tweaks that that we would probably change um, for next year if we could. Uh, getting to the Hall of Fame game, are we going to see guys like uh, we're going to see some David Bells? We're going to see some, um, you know, uh, Jerome Fords, some uh, Anthony Schwartzes. Uh, and, and do you expect to see more of um, uh, what's his name? DTR. He has a name, right? Dorian Thompson Robinson. What is his name? He, he got, they got an acronym for everybody now. Or are you going to see more of Dobbs? Uh, you know what? I actually think you'll you'll see more of DTR and Kellen Mond. I don't think, uh, I don't even know that you're going to see very much of Joshua Dobbs. This is a game for the back end of the roster, for the really young guys uh, to prove that they deserve a spot that they can hang around. Uh, so you are not going to see starters. Uh, now, it's it's going to be interesting to see. They have to get through a whole game. So you're going to have to play a number of guys that, you know, that are pretty good. So you will see, you know, the David Bells and some of those guys playing in this game. But you're, you're certainly not going to see Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore and Deshaun Watson in this game on Thursday night. It's going to be the battle of the backups, an opportunity to just kind of get things rolling for the preseason and find out some more about some of these younger players. Having the extra game, do you know how Kevin plans to play everybody through this preseason? Like, what, at what point will we see Deshaun Watson for any length of time? 
Well, that's going to be very interesting because um, you, they're not going to play in this game, Deshaun and the veterans. And then when they go up to Philadelphia and they practice on two occasions on back-to-back days against the Eagles. They get such good work done in those two practices. They don't want to play those guys in that game either. So you're leaving only the second game and the fourth preseason game uh, to play your veterans and your starters. The interesting thing about that is in the fourth preseason game, generally, as we all know, that's a game when you do rest your starters and let them get ready for the season. So does that mean that it will it will only be Deshaun getting some playing time this preseason against Washington? Or will Kevin come back in that fourth preseason game against the Chiefs in Kansas City and give him a couple of series there? It would stand to reason that in order to get your timing down and have your mojo down with all these new receivers and a and an overhauled offense that uh you know that you might want to get him a little bit more time uh, in these preseason games but again we're only probably talking about game two and game four especially against andy reed because i think it was last year that andy had his starters out there for the first half of the entire of the of the final preseason game i i don't know if you're kevin i i'd, I'd like to see uh, you know the ones against their ones for a length of time just to see and what better yardstick than the kansas city chiefs Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, and it's almost unfortunate that they won't be playing against the Eagles in that game because, you know, the Eagles obviously are so good. And then, as you mentioned, the Chiefs are so good. So, you're, you know, you would be getting really, really good work against both of these teams. Um, But sometimes coaches will talk to each other before a game and sort of decide if they're going to play their starters. So, you know, it could be Kevin and Andy could kind of talk to each other ahead of time a little bit and decide what they want to do for that final preseason game, because you don't want to have a third stringer, you know, trying to, you know, trying to make a name for himself by, uh, you know, tackling Deshaun Watson low or something like that. So, uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. Mary Kay, this running back market is off the rails. And when you see what's going on in Indianapolis with Jonathan Taylor now and his back and forth with Jim Irsay, where is this headed, do you think? Is there ever is this ever going to come back around for running backs? And what kind of implication will this have on Nick Chubb after this season? Well, I'm glad that the running backs are banding together. There is strength in numbers, and they really are sticking by each other. And we know that Nick Chubb participated in the Zoom call, and those guys have his full support, even though he's the last running back to get a double-digit million extension when he got his in 2010 or 20. I mean, I can't now. I can't remember when it was now, Um, but not 2010. That that was a hundred years. But 2020 or 2021 is what I meant. But um, so, you know, that was the last time a running back has gotten that. And, you know, again, I think it's great that they are sticking together the way that they are. Um, But, you know, I just don't know. I don't know if that's going to cause owners to say, hey, we need to really pay these guys. Um, Or if, you know, the league or the union or somebody will be able to come up with something Um, But, you know, right now, this is just the way that it is. As far as Nick Chubb is concerned, the Browns view Nick Chubb as more than just, you know, your great running back for the Cleveland Browns. He's sort of a face of the team. Uh, He embodies the entire spirit of the Cleveland Browns. And he is somebody that they're going to try to do right by Nick Chubb. He has meant so much to this franchise uh, since they first drafted him that they they don't want to end on bad terms with Nick Chubb. So they will find a way, they will do everything that they can to keep him here for as long as they possibly can and have him be happy. Man, am I glad to hear that. Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about, Mary Kay. So you so you you want to officially say that they're going to extend Nick Chubb <laughs> <laughs> to that $30 million extension coming up next week. That's for Jason. That's here you go. Listen, if there's you a guy what? that deserves it, it's him. But I, you know, there's no need for them to do that. But I'm, I'm glad you said what you said, Mary Kay, because obviously there's when you just look with your eyeballs and you watch all of the running backs, he's elite. He's special. He does things that very, you know, there are very few others that can do the, uh, all the things that he can do. And long term, historically, Mary Kay, you're looking at a guy, and you hate to say this so early in his career, but you're looking at a guy that takes care of his body so well, he could have a very long career. And then you're start, you start thinking about 
things like all-time rushing leader. Like, is that in his sights? Could he do that? It'd be a shame if he had to do it in someone else's uniform. Right. Like I said, it, you know, it's not necessarily going to be easy, but they will make every effort to do right by Nick Chubb. I mean, for the most part, they do that, of course, with all of their players. But when it comes to Nick, it is more than just a business. We hear that saying all the time. Uh, but I think there are some players that sort of transcend that a little bit. And I think Nick is one of those players. You really uh, want to make sure that, you know, with the Joe Thomases of the world and the Joel Batonios and, and the Nick Chubbs, uh, that, you know, that they – end up leaving here with good feelings that fans feel good about how you treated them, that you're sending a message to other players in the NFL and to the league uh, that you do take care of guys like this. So, uh, you know, again, it's not necessarily going to be easy uh, to get him paid the way that he's going to want to get paid, uh, but they will work in good faith to do right by Nick Chubb. Very good. I think that's great news. Great news for everybody. Uh, any standouts, any disappointments from camp for you? Uh, standouts. I mean, you know, number one, we have to talk about Elijah Moore. He is dynamite and the connection with Deshaun Watson is very real. I don't think we're overstating it. He's really, really good in so many ways. They're, they're moving him around. They're playing him inside. They're playing him outside. They're running him out of the backfield and he is just so fun to watch. And I think, uh, I think he potentially is going to have a tremendous, tremendous season. So he did a, a phenomenal job. Uh, again, from from a defensive standpoint, uh, you know, I thought Greg Newsom had a really nice camp. I thought Martin Emerson did, Juan Thornhill, all those guys really did. Grant Delpit, uh, the secondary was definitely standing out. I thought that Miles Garrett, you know, he doesn't even, you know, really have to give 100% in these practices, but, you know, 80% of Miles is still so tough to handle. And he gave Jed Wills all Jed Wills could handle yesterday. I mean, it it was a lot. So, um, you know, so that was one thing to watch. Uh, Dewan Jones, I saw, uh, saw him whip his helmet down last night. I mean, yesterday in the practice. And, you know, he expressed a little bit of frustration. He was also sick for a couple of days. Um, so I think he's someone that kind of is going to need to step it up because Tyrone Wheatley Jr., uh, has gotten some some kudos from uh, the staff, from from what I understand. And and uh, Dewand is someone that's just going to ha have to keep working at it. He's getting really hard coaching from Bill Callahan, but everybody does. Uh, so he's one to keep an eye on. Uh, let me think what else. Um, the whole D-line looks really, really good. I'm a little concerned about the linebackers because of the health of the linebackers. Phil, uh, so that, that. I, I want to know more about that because I'm very concerned about that. Hell, most of them ended the year hurt last year. Yeah, so you have Anthony Walker Jr. not really doing all that much yet. Sione Takitaki working his way uh, back into the lineup. Uh, I did find out on this trip that JOK suffered the dreaded Liz Frank foot injury, oh, right? No. I mean, we, did, we didn't really know what it was, um, and that's what it was. It was the dreaded Liz Frank, what? and um, but he was able to get through it without a surgery. Now, he is working his way back. And I thought he looked really good out there. So hopefully he won't have any residual injuries from that. And he'll just be able to kind of hit the ground running and, and get back out there and do a really nice job. But, you know, that area is still a little up in the air because of all the injuries. And, and that you, you saying that's what he sustained last year. Uh, oh, it, last year and through the offseason, he chose not to have the surgery. And he looks like he's back ready to go, dude. Yes. Um, he missed the final four games with the, the Liz Frank foot injury. He had to make a decision on whether or not he wanted to have the surgery. So the fact that he had a choice is a good sign. Uh, you know, it wasn't just the only thing is you're going under the knife or forget it. Um, so the fact that he was able to, to rehab it naturally, which is the way he lives his life anyways, um, you know, I think that's a really good sign. He looked like he was moving really well on it. Uh, there was not a time when he needed to really sit out of practice or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think he's doing a really nice job. All right, Mary Kay, we certainly appreciate all your knowledge and input. Thank you so much. And we're lo very much looking forward to you joining us uh, on Thursdays throughout the football season here on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Great job as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, we didn't talk about the mouse. The mouse. I forgot about the mouse. I didn't ask her about the mouse. She 